to my yoga studio. I am here today to talk to you about stress resilience. In yoga, we say it's not what happens to us in life that is, matters as much as how we react to it. So every time you can spend time paying attention to your body, coming back into yourself, you can help develop some strategies to improve your stress resilience by improving the way we react to things. I always say we can either um, react out of fear or respond out of love. And most of us in our amygdala brain, our primitive brain, respond to life by reacting out of fear. So in this very short video, I'm going to show you a practice that you can do every night before you go to bed and you can do it in your bed to help uh, control your blood pressure, to come control your um, glucose metabolism, the blood sugar level in your blood, and really just to relax you and get you ready for a deep sleep, which is number one, if you've taken our kickstart to wellness program, you know is so vital to be able to sleep. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit of uh, yin yoga. And yin yoga is really based on uh, both the Ayurveda yoga principles as well as some uh, traditional Chinese medicine, thousands of years old. And we're gonna talk about um, working the first meridian, which is the bladder and the kidney meridian, which controls, again, um, all of the fluids in your body from the 15 gallons of blood that uh, is filtered through the kidneys per hour to um, lubrication in your joints. So if you have joint pain, um, if you have a lot of uh, bloating in your belly, if you have lower back pain, if you have trouble with uh, blood pressure, uh, even if you have trouble with things like uh, temper, anger management, uh, this uh, simple few postures I'm gonna share with you can help you with um, emotional balance too. When we have uh, too much fire in the belly, uh, if our personality is hard driving all the time, if your favorite activity might be like mine used to be, which is to do a very hot yoga, a Bikram yoga, or uh, you're a marathon runner, or you're just pushing yourself to the limit, you could be compromising your kidney or your kidney chi or your bladder kidney meridian. If you have trouble with frequent urination, um, this can be signs of uh, prediabetes. It could be uh, also signs of just an imbalance in this bladder, kidney, meridian. So without further ado, ado let's uh, find a comfortable position. You can lay down on a yoga mat like you have here or in your bed, and you might have a little pillow underneath the back of your neck. And just uh, bring your shoulder blades so they're, they're under the neck. You might have your palms facing up, the arms by the side. Bring the legs down about at least hip distance apart. Let the feet fall out to the side. And just take a minute to breathe and settle in. And notice, where are you holding tension? Do you feel it uh, in the shoulders, in the neck, uh, behind the, the shoulder blades, maybe uh, the lower back? You should have a natural curve um, underneath the neck and the lower back. Take a minute to inhale through the heart center, the side rib cage into the lower belly. Hold it and then relax with a <sighs> Letting everything melt with a new jai breath. Now inhale and bring the right knee up to the chest, maybe in line with the breast and bring the hands on top of the knee and just let the knee sink into the body, just with the 
the weight of the hands and the arms and let gravity. The wonderful thing about a yin practice is it's the opposite of yang. It's, the, it's a passive rather than an active practice. And the goal is to hold this position for three to five minutes. And the more we can breathe and the more we can relax, we're giving the message to the body to release and let go. And the ligaments and the tendons that are holding the muscles, the bigger, larger muscles, like your hamstrings or your uh, gluteus muscles, begin to relax and let go. And you therefore actually can get a deeper stretch often in a yin practice than if you were just uh, trying to force the body to stretch. And in this way, you prevent yourself from injuring yourself too. So as we notice, as we breathe, the belly, the, the leg may move up and down a little bit just with the breath. So just sink and notice and breathe. And see if you can hold this position for three to five minutes. I don't set an alarm. If my clock is uh, within vision, I might see and notice, but most of the time it's on the other side of the bed and I just kind of guess at when three to five minutes is up. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna wait the whole three to five minutes. But you can take this time as a moving meditation also, as a time to meditate and just come inward. You might even have a mantra like, I am. You might just focus on the breath. You might just notice what thoughts come and go from the body. And you might even get a period of uh, if a wave of panic or anxiety comes, just breathe through that. Notice it. Take a deep belly breath and let it go. And this way you are practicing physical resilience as well as mental resilience. Now there's two things you can do when you're done. The first thing, the simplest thing that I do at night, especially when I'm really tired, is I just inhale when I'm finished and I raise my foot up and I exhale and I bring it back down and then pause for a minute and notice. Does uh, You might feel a wave of energy coming down and you might feel that blood rushing all the way through the groin down to the toes. And it's a very subtle chi or energy that you're releasing through the body. And the right foot might even feel longer than the left leg. So it's curious and, and have a sense of curiosity with this. And then inhale. And on the exhale, bring the left knee up and just let it settle right about in line with the breast. And you might notice that one side may feel different than the other side because we are often imbalanced. So this is a way of returning the body to balance as well as preparing you for sleep. If you have a um, wake up and are not feeling refreshed or feeling stiff, this is also a great exercise to do first thing in the morning before you get out of bed. Again, sometimes when we get a rise, when we wake up, we have a rise of cortisol in the morning that um, can raise our blood pressure. Our blood pressure is typically highest first thing in the morning. So doing something like this can help, again, um, maintain optimal blood pressure as well as blood sugar levels and glucose levels. You can do this in the afternoon if you have the luxury of having a yoga mat nearby, maybe in your office, to lie down in. 
So this bladder kidney meridian, um, we might feel, it may stimulate your emotions too. You might feel some emotions rising up that you're not even aware are stuck in the body. You might have some tears well up. Um, whatever happens, just accept it. Just like in a meditative practice, just look at it, not with fear or alarm, but with curiosity. Hmm. And just like in meditation, you can let these thoughts come, acknowledge it, but don't get swept away with it. Let it just pass. And then this is a way, again, of practicing that resilience. It's not what happens to us in life, it's how we react to it. And we can choose not to react to these negative thoughts or these emotions. And yet, we're not stuffing them either. We're acknowledging them and we're letting it pass. Very, very therapeutic. Then inhale, raise the foot up and exhale and let it come down. And then if, again, feel this rush of energy on the opposite side. Something else I like to do um, when I'm lying in bed, if I'm not already asleep by now, sometimes I fall asleep in the middle of this practice, is just to raise that right knee up again and then bring it across the body and then extend the right arm out and look over the shoulder and you feel a really nice twist. So the spine moves in seven directions and in this simple practice, we've just opened up um, really the front and back line of the body and now we're working on um, the obliques and twisting and, and massaging the nerves, especially the vagal nerve that goes, um, it's the largest wandering nerve outside of the spinal cord and it's what monitors fight or flight versus rest and repair, rest and digest, or as I like to say, mate and ovulate. A lot of our infertility is because we're stuck in sympathetic um, overdrive. And when you're, after you've had a nice chest, you can bring your leg back and then keep it on the thigh and like you're in a um, supine position of tree pose. And if your leg does not come all the way to the mat, um, I'm pretty flexible, I've been doing this for years, you can take a block and bring it under or a pillow and just opening up the groin area here again and um, in, a, in a tree pose. This can feel really good about balancing this whole sacral area. If you have lower back issues, um, this is a great way to uh, open up and stretch out this uh, area that can get restricted when we're in chairs all day. So we can extend that leg, bring the next knee up, cross over, stretch, look on the other side. This feels really good. It's really great for the shoulders. I'm gonna do another little quick video to help you with the neck and shoulder pain that you can do here, as well as in the car or even in an airplane if you're a frequent traveler. This is really great um, also to help balance kind of massage the inner organs. We also just um, massage the ascending colon and the descending colon when we were doing the, the knee to chest. So many benefits with these simple yin practices. And give yourself a little time in each pose to really feel it and assimilate it. I hope you found this helpful or useful. Um, as always, I hope you're part of our membership of our um, Wellness Empowered You. You can always uh, go in and type a question, uh, leave a comment. How did this help your sleep? Is this a way to um, lower your stress, your, your perception or feelings of stress? And is, this, is it also helpful in stress resilience. Have a fabulous day. Thank you.